Salutation. Or welcome. Not salutation, but welcome. Today, we're going to make an attempt to peel off layers of historical occurrences. We, as African people, or black people, have been told many things by many people about our history. But we ourselves have not done the proper historical documentation that need to be in the area of nutrition. We have done history about the different empires, about the kings and the queens that we never needed, don't need now. But I have yet to hear about a work that was dedicated to healing, just nutrition. Why is it so important? Well, you know, as we go into this thing that we call healing, history again becomes the vehicle that we're going to use to travel towards that goal that we're looking for. We are looking for a goal because we're sick. Something that we didn't have in our environment. So, healing, in entertaining the subject, one has to remember that it has to be tied to the cosmic procession. Healing has to be consistent with life itself. If it isn't, then it's not healing. The components have to be from life. So as we go into this historical thing, this journey back into the past, to find what was it that was really happening in Africa, what was occurring. Well, we could begin with that black woman, Mama. You know the black woman that many countries has uh, like identified her as being a savage. When they first saw her without any clothes, everybody was amazed. This woman is naked. Not that she's natural, she is naked. But she didn't know that. My mama didn't know that she was naked. That is the way she was since creation. The natural way to be. But the foreigners saw her as a savage. And many of us, her children, we also collaborate. And we think that it is correct the way that we see her. And we, her children, also say she was a savage. You know the PhD professor with his suit and his tie, when he's told that his beginning began with a black woman without no clothes, it's embarrassing. It's what, like Mr. Hamid Blewett said to us, shame takes over. I am ashamed of my history because it began with a naked woman in the forest of Africa. But that naked woman was more than just an image that you saw in your eyes that was running around crazy. She was saying that 
we could live without any clothes. My mama could live without any clothes in the forest of Africa. And she could walk around and nobody was jumping on her. Well, was she a savage? Or was she showing that she lived in a highly ethical and moral society? You know the conversation that I had in Brazil where the Russians said, hey, before you say something about your people, just remember that your mama didn't have any clothes on just 500 years ago. I said, but not enough. Why did you stop without no clothes? What do you mean? I said, but you're saying that my mama didn't have any clothes on 500 years ago, but she didn't have any supermarkets, and she didn't have any doctors. She didn't have any hospitals. She did not have any disease. Mama, mama didn't have any clothes on, that's all. Well, mama didn't have alcohol. Mama didn't have any drugs. Mama didn't have any money. And by the way, we are going to go into it a little bit more. You see what happened? Like everything else that's occurring today in this 20th century, we misinterpret. We black people, we have been vulnerable to the research that others has done about our mama. But as we look closer, we find that mama Mama was ethical and moral and shameless. I wish that we could do that now if we think that she was a savage. You tell your woman today to walk the streets without no clothes on and see who is the savage. So as we leave that part of Mama where she shows that she was highly ethical and that she lived in a very beautiful environment with her brothers and her sisters, now we go into her diet, that's very important. Because you see, her diet was, con it was consistent with her cellular predisposition. Her diet was like the eagle. The eagle doesn't eat the diet of the Quetzal bird because the Quetzal eats only fruits and seeds, also the love bird from Africa. But when you go to the eagle, which is a bird, he eats meat. The eagle eats meat. Then we leave that bird, we go to the gorilla and the polar bear, like I like to use. The polar bear has to kill his food. He eats blood, not so for the gorilla. He has nothing to do with blood. His, his leave. He doesn't have to kill his food. His food is all around him. So this question I'm reading to is this. The gorilla has his food designed by nature. The eagle has his food designed by nature, oh God. Do you believe that we are exempt? No, we are not. We are not exempt. We have to follow that same law, that rule, that cosmic arrangement, the one that dictates, not the one that is philosophy, the one that dictates from the core of life since creation. We are subjected to that same law. There's a little frog in Puerto Rico they call it the coqui. That little frog, if any of you have visited Puerto Rico, you will hear that little frog all night singing, coqui, coqui, coqui. If you move that frog 
from the island of Puerto Rico and put it seven kilometers away, Vieques, the frog dies. The frog will die. The frog would no longer sing. We're seeing that this frog is showing us that the frog has to live within that cosmic arrangement to survive, to live at its optimum level of life and expression. Well, are we exempt? Our mother didn't have any rice and beans, hog moths and chitlins. Our mother didn't eat garbage, and she didn't produce garbage. She didn't have ham because she didn't eat meat. Well, this is interesting now, isn't it? Our mother didn't eat meat, no. There were no cows in Africa. They didn't have any hogs or chicken, lamb or goat. Those things are in Africa. But there are many Africans today that believe that, y that yams are African. Cassava is African. When an African believes that these things are African or natural, well, it only means that we have to go and do further research. That's all. We have to go and do further research. Something has been derailed. Or we have been derailed. So when you believe that, that starches, such as yams, was part of your diet, well, that's it. Slavery is back again or never left. So our mother living in an alkali environment didn't eat the things that would bring disease. This is why she showed that she didn't need a hospital. But there is something else about this black woman in the jungles of Africa. She didn't have any serial killers. She didn't have any children that were disobedient. There was no chaos. There was peace. Myself, unlike most of my brothers and sisters who has been to Egypt, and they did research on Ramses and Nefertiti, Cleopatra. I was never interested in Egyptian history. No, never. Hmm. Maybe just to know that it occurred. Not that I was interested to extrapolate from Egypt any substance that would support and enhance my life. No. Egypt doesn't have any of those components. But I could travel a little bit west from Egypt. And I could go into the jungles of Africa. Yeah, the jungle where my mama lived. In that environment, I could find a plant known as Kankansa which if you are 90 or 100 years of age and you find yourself at a deficit sexually, you only have to take Kankansa once and you are renewed again. That you get out the jungle. Then we go, we, we stay in the jungles. There's another one called Sia. It's a plant that Michael Jackson's son had the opportunity to receive the benefit from. He had a tumor in his frontal lobe and he sneezed that out in 20 minutes. That herb is another jungle herb. Then we go a little bit now to the south of Guinea and we find Namibia. Namibia has another plant known as the hudia. This is a plant that upon ingesting it, 
you will not eat for days because it is nourishing every cell in your body. Then we go to the Iboga, Cameroon, the great Iboga, the plant that relaxes the body and places the body in a state of bliss. There could be no emotional problem. But those of you that have traveled to Egypt came back with souvenirs. You came back with souvenirs. I didn't come with any souvenirs from the jungle. I came back with a healing. Because somewhere in my little journey on this planet, I heard something from my parents. I was very obedient. I'm still obedient. My mother and my grandmother, Mama He, never had any complaint from the neighbors of the community that Fred did something to offend them. No, I didn't indulge in that. So somewhere in the conversation that my grandmother, Mama He, and my mother, Violet, would share with me, I heard something like this. Be obedient. To be obedient is a very necessary thing, especially now. When God placed us in the forest of Africa, he placed with us a mandate and a food. That's all we needed. But because today, I have been taken away from that natural cosmic arrangement. I need a guru. I need a preacher. I need a leader. That is only showing us we are confused. We need help. We are sick. So in peeling off the layers of history and excavating further, we find that Mama was far from being a savage. She was the one that was in direct compliance with the arrangement of life. And it is because of her that I'm able to be the servant that I am to you. Yes, I enjoy my position. I should enjoy it. I enjoy every position I've always I've occupied. I was a steam engineer. I used to sweep the floors of a commissary. I used to mop the floor. I used to carry the food to the white people in Honduras, in Masapang. I like doing that too. I became a merchant seaman. I like that. I like everything. I love everything. So as a servant to you, I, I'm only letting you know that the accomplishment that I have, I have been accredited with belongs to that naked woman in the forest of Africa. Yes, I am not asking the black race to take their clothes off. No, which we should have, because it would be the optimum level of expression in living life, because the cells of the body would breathe. Today, we covered up all the cells. This is why when someone takes their clothes off, under that clothes look a little bit more worn out than the face and the arms. Why? They have been deprived of oxygen, for maybe 50, 60 years. But mama didn't have that. Mama didn't tax daddy. Hey, you boy. You have to buy me this dress that I saw. You have to buy me these capricio shoes. Mama didn't need shoes. She walked as God made her. She was in direct compliance with God. But today, I, her son, 
was taken away from her 500 years ago. We no longer live by the dictates of that woman. I eat chicken, I eat hog maws, I eat rice and beans. At the end of that, I find myself at a deficit. I was sick at 30, impotent from 27 to 30, diabetic from 27 until 30, asthmatic from birth. A baby is being born sick. Yes, I'm one of those babies born sick. That is against life procession. A sick baby. A baby should be born healthy. But to clear that, to bring it to light, that we could understand when babies were born healthy, the quality of the sperm that made the babies 500 years ago in the jungles of Africa, that sperm was not impregnated with hog moths, rice and beans and potatoes. That sperm was of a different quality. It was an alkali sperm. That's correct. Why? Because mama and daddy only ate that which was alkali. That's all nature makes. Nature doesn't produce an acid substance. Nature only produces an alkali substance. Going back to mama again, we have to travel to and fro because every time we visit her, we see where being in the deficit that we are, we're going deeper. We should stop it. This is where Uruwa comes in. The sperm that makes the babies, that made the babies 500 years ago, didn't need to be born in a hospital. Mama had her babies under a tree. Mama didn't need a doctor. That's a violation when you need a doctor. You have been violated up until 500 years ago. Mama wasn't violated. She lived by the laws of life. So her baby could be born under a tree and the baby would be born healthy because the quality of the sperm was what God would like for all of us to be or to produce or to inject in a woman or to offer. The quality of the sperm was alkaline. Today, not so. Not so. Because we have been severed from mama and eating all of the things that we are consuming today, the quality of our sperm is very much acid. Babies are being born autistic. Babies are being born asthmatic like me. Babies are being born diabetic. Babies are being born with cancer. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, something is wrong, isn't it? And what is wrong? That we were taken away from the natural rhythm, from that organic environment. Our babies are being born sick. And I am one of those babies. But when I begin to research mama and my diet begin to change with the help of a Mexican, Alfredo Cortez, now I'm 80 years of age and I have a little girl named Taiwa. She's two. That is showing me that just by revisiting mama a little bit, 
I was able to accomplish something that I never believed was possible. So now let us not lose focus that that environment that mama lived within afford her peace. And this is what we are trying to bring to you, an alkali substance. Because when your brother, Sebi, in 1988, proved to the Supreme Court of New York and to the world, yes, we cure AIDS, we cure diabetes, we cure. We should not be afraid to claim it. It's like Sister Nicole said, that I didn't know, that the black race has been accredited for the cures of diseases. When she said that, it resonated well with me because it is the truth. If this is true, what prevent our so-called leaders from supporting this entity? We need healing. All of us need healing. What prevents them? The same thing that prevented my brother from recognizing what I was offering him. He passed away 25 years ago, and he was the preacher. I am not a preacher. I am a servant to my community. Not that I wanted to be a servant to my community. I want to be a musician. I want to be like John Coltrane. I want to be like Pharaoh Sanders, but like Miles, like all Amy Blewett. But no. Nature said, shut your mouth. This is what you have been designed for. But in that design that I recognize, because I find myself in the middle of it, the message I got is that I'm only the messenger of healing. I am not the healer. Yes, like I said, we have reversed the diseases that they said are irreversible, but I am not the healer, it is a woman. Because healer, healing needs a nurturer. Healing needs an understanding of nature. That's not a male. And this is precisely why you will never see a cub following a daddy in the forest. <coughs> Why? Daddy doesn't have the program of life embedded in his brain. It is mama again. You will never see cubs following daddy. All males and females follow mama, including that lion that the Frenchman said is the king of the jungle. Well, if the lion is the king of the jungle, she must be something better than that, because that lion came out of that lioness. But again, being severed from mama, we take on this philosophical expression. Yeah, that's where the breakdown begins. I cannot live by the dictates of that naked woman in the forest of Africa. I have to live by the dictates of the philosophy of Socrates and Plato, Diogenes, John Stuart Mills, Spinoza, all these people I am supposed to know about. Why, I don't know. But I have been led there, and my friends would use that against me because I haven't done any research in the area of 
philosophy, because I'm not interested in philosophy then or now. I am interested in life. Philosophy doesn't afford or offer any substance that you could add to the sequence or the arrangement of life. It doesn't offer anything. But when you look at the jungles, oh boy, you begin to see mushrooms, alkali plants. Scientifically, they are called phosphates, carbonates, iodides, and bromides. This is what they are called scientifically. That's all we had. A pH of more than seven. And what do I mean? That everything that mama ate in the that mouth of Africa had a pH of seven plus. That means that is on the alkali side. Today, no longer. I eat minus seven. I eat garlic, 3.3. I drink cow milk, 6 or 5.5. 5. I eat meats. I eat starches that ranges in the pole. Never seven, not even that. I eat acid food, acid thoughts. Mama? Yes, Tupac. You did a good job, Tupac, when you talk about Mama. Mama? Mama didn't have toilets. Mama didn't need a toilet. I remember once, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, there was an argument with me and a professor from UCLA. And this man was trying his endeavor best to show me that the Europeans have to be given credit we have to give them credit for inventing the toilet. And I looked at Alfred. I said, I must be very wrong. I must be very, very, very mistaken. Because this man is a professor at UCLA. And he's telling me that the invention of the toilet was the greatest invention ever because I could flush my acid fecal matter to the ocean. Listen carefully now. He is trying to win an argument against me which I never try to win or lose. I cannot win or lose. I don't go into a debate or a dialogue to win. It is about understanding. I don't debate with anyone. I don't have to do that. But he, Alfred, said that because the Europeans invented the toilet, that he deserved much credit. So my response to Alfred was this, Alfred, my history shows that mama didn't need a toilet because everything that she ate was alkali. Because it was alkali, it didn't leave any residuals of poison or acid in her fecal matter when it was broken down in her intestine by the villi. Mama could take her feces and put them in the ground again, and it should have smelled good. With my little understanding, and the little accomplishment that I have made over the 40 years of this particular giving, when I go to the toilet, I don't smell anything. But I remember when I couldn't stand it, I had to spray the toilet. Sure I had to. Because I'm just like you. I am the product of disease. I asked my mother, Mama, what was it that you and Daddy was eating that helped to create the condition 
for me to be born with asthma. She said, but we used to eat conks, lobsters, crabs, shrimps. Those are all scavengers. The scavengers, the acid, very acid. My mama and my daddy was eating crabs, shrimps, and conks, and lobsters, and they eat pork meat. So here they are. They were eating the scavenger. What category we should place mama and daddy? If they were eating the scavenger, they are worse than the scavenger, and I am the result of that diet. And then you tell me that I'm cool? Come on now, just be cool. You know I'm sick. You know I have to be sick. I'm lucky that I have a child born to me at 78. I'm 80 now, the child is two. That was only because when I went to America and I met this Mexican, he took my diet that I once had and then I met these people that we call hippies. And they were on the right path in reference to diet. So I was able to do something to make a change. So now I could smile when I used to cry. I was placed, and you could do this research yourself, I was placed in an insane asylum in New Jersey in 1961. The brother was schizophrenic and paranoia. To leave that state of paranoia and schizophrenia to now having patients come to us that are cured from schizophrenia and paranoia. You see what a diet does? Mama, again. The diet of mama. Oh yeah, Tupac, I wish that you had lived a little bit longer because I know you've added something to the chapter. Because I like what you did with Mama. Because Mama is the basis of all life. It is Mama. So today, we are bringing you this first chapter of this mother expression and offering this thing that we need today because today I cannot love you. How could I love you when I don't even love myself? I blow my brains out, I take pills to take me away because everything is like ugly. We didn't have those things occurring in the jungle. It was very peaceful. It was harmony. It was harmony. They weren't violent. They couldn't be violent because they ate alkali food. That's all they ate. And in my research, I find that the people that was brought to us that were insane, well, we just change their diet and we take their clothes off. And immediately they calmed down and they slept that night. Why? because the brain was not invaded with the uric acid, the carbonic acid. No, mama did not have that in her diet. So yes, this is the first chapter, this is the first of a series of lectures that we will bring to you in helping us to see that mama was not a savage. She was in direct compliance with the energies of life and that she didn't need the guru and the preacher, the Dalai Lama. She didn't need any of those people. Not that they are bad people, she didn't need them because she lived in a harmonious environment. And I believe that at this stage of our journey, in reconstructing that which has been destroyed, we need this dictate, the dictate from the jungle.
Thank you very much. Your brother, Sebi.